Bible is the source of our wisdom and knowledge. But for a long time in Christian churches, on uh, multimedia, people have misconstrued and lied on the Bible, miscommunicated the Bible to their own destruction. Destroying their families, destroying their children, all because we're following doctrines that are not of God. Saying, 
How long, ye simple ones? How long are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans going to live in their simplicity? Simplicity is not royalty at any any way, form, or fashion. Right. When our women dress in pants and they have on that manly spirit, and men dress in, uh, put on female attire, we're showing how confused our nation is. Right. We're not dwelling in wisdom at all. But then we'll ask the same people that made it okay for us to do that to help us out. But they profit off of our confusion. Right. When we come back to God's laws, we can start to prosper because we're back in our royal state of mind. That's right. So that's why we teach our people who they are, what is required of them by God, what sin is, how to come out of sin, what repentance is, and why it is important for our nation to repent. This is your son. What are the things that you should teach him, right? Same thing that God is teaching us as uh, what we now are adults. We're still his children. What are we to teach your son? What are you to teach your son as being commanded as a child of God, right? You can be teaching your son the commandments of the Lord, teaching him his nationality according to the Bible. Now, I do have a question for you, and okay. you might actually be able to answer my question okay. finally. My issue is this. I am married, and I'm a very strong believer that when I speak to my husband versus what happened in church, that's the best way for me to understand what was said. That's, that's what I should. But the issue is that without him, being that he's not around, how could I possibly teach him if I suffer not a woman to teach? Okay, now, uh, Titus go two. to uh, Titus 2. Because at, you, you're saying your, your son? So you As are, mother, according to, to the that. Bible, you are responsible for teaching your children. So I can? Yes. That, because that's what, your hedge of protection, your husband, is charged with teaching you. Oh, Therefore, right. you teach your can. children, oh. right? And right. when it says usurping authority over the congregation, that's dealing with a congregation of, of, of a full body. Hey, right. Where right. the woman should not be the pastor yeah. of the yeah. church teaching that men. Well. Yes. You, you understand? Because that's out of order. You understand? Yes, so let's get that. Titus 2. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. So this is the clear understanding of that. Read. Okay. The aged woman likewise, uh -huh. that they be in, be, be in behavior as becoming holiness, uh -huh. not false accusers, Go ahead. not given to much wine, uh -huh. teachers of good things. So these things they'll be able to read and see in the Bible and apply. They should be teachers of good things. What else should they be teaching? Read on. Go ahead. That they may teach the young women to... Uh -oh. It said that they, the aged women, can teach the younger women and their sons as well. Because we'll even see in Proverbs 31 where it talks about a virtuous woman. You'll realize that that's Solomon's mother, give, well, I, I call it giving him the game. You understand that? Yes, sir. So read on. And then that, we'll get that example. Go ahead. That they may teach the young woman to be sober, uh -huh. to love their husbands, uh -huh. to love their children. To love their children. So these are things that you would have to teach to the younger women, but also your child as well. That's why I go back to Deuteronomy 6 and 7. It says, teach him as you're walking in the way. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Uh -huh. you know, and thou shalt teach them diligently. Diligently. Teach your children diligently. Because it is your responsibility to teach your children. That is a commandment. Read on. Unto thy children. Uh-huh. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you sit in your house, you should be teaching your son the commandments. Read on. And when thou walkest by the way. So right now, you should be having a conversation with your son about the commandments. But all praise to the Most High, you found your brothers in Christ. That you can learn and this would be the foundation for him learning. Let me just who say thank is. you because for a long time, for instance, right now, it's not even something that I wish. My husband is actually the Lord to me because the man that is teaching him the gospel suggested that if he does not have authority over the home for all decisions, that that is wrong. But he's really extending that truth a little bit by saying again, I suffer not a woman to teach, therefore I couldn't teach him. And by doing so, I oh. disobeyed him. Okay. Oh, okay. And of oh. course, he got physical and emotional. And I ended up, I'm actually right now with Sister Faith. Okay. So I don't know where you are in all this, but so, I would love it if you pray for my family. Well, I'll pray. And we, we, it is a sin if we don't pray for our people because our people have been scattered to various doctrines, to foolishness. And that is what creates within our community all types of destruction. Right. Right. So now you're basically saying that a family has now been destroyed because of a lack of understanding of the exactly. scripture. Uh, yeah. Isaiah 33 and 6. So now it is our job to teach our people correctly. All right. Matter of fact, 
Uh, you, you, you probably don't have a lot of communication with your husband at this point in time? I would guess you prefer to keep it that way at okay. the moment, just for my own safety. Okay, oh, for your own safety, and I, I, I fully respect that. But watch this. So watch what the Bible says about these rocky times that we experience right. as we go through and have to actually count the cost of what it means to actually learn the Bible correctly. Go ahead, read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 6. Uh -huh. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. Wisdom and knowledge. The Bible is the source of our wisdom and knowledge. But for a long time in Christian churches, on uh, multimedia, people have misconstrued and lied on the Bible, miscommunicated the Bible to their own destruction. Right. Destroying their families, destroying their children, all because we're following doctrines that are not of God. Right. Understand that. And but an extension, they leave the way they came. The right. So, but the Bible says this. Read again. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the, the, the stability of thy time. So as you come back to learning your nationality, because I have to ask that question too. Was your husband teaching you your nationality in the scriptures? Teaching you that you, you say you're from Asher? Mm -hmm. You say Asher? Okay, what country are, are, do your descendants come from? Um, well, yes, um, my mother's Puerto Rican and Puerto my Rican? father's Colombian. Colombian? Okay, all praise. But my husband, uh -huh. he's African-American. He's African-American, okay. Yes. So did he ever teach the understanding that we are the Israelites? No, he's the same as me. We were really thinking that we needed to take our faith seriously as we were tired of being the one Christians. All right. And then he saw the cross this man that Who was it? given him. Who was it? It's a gentleman that he met at his workplace. Okay. Um, he's 53, he has a wife, they don't have any kids, she can't have any children. And I think he just was really attached to him because he's young and he probably okay. sees him as a son. Okay, so let's, let's go to Jeremiah 23 and 1. Bring it up. Because you, you, let's give some understanding according to the scriptures on what happened. And then I want Jeremiah 14 and 14, just to give you some understanding. Go ahead, read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. So wisdom and knowledge must be the stability of our times, right? Right. So what happened is he was able to misconstrue the doctrine based on someone giving him the wrong interpretation. Right. Let's see what the judgment is going to be for that, according to God. Read. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep. So now by those, that pastor teaching him the wrong That's interpretation right. of the Bible, it has that. destroyed <laughs> our people. It's wow. destroying a household. Now our young men, are, this is the problem that a lot of us, black, Hispanic, Native American community, right. we are wondering where are our fathers? We're wondering where is that hedge of protection? Where is that source of understanding in the image and example of Christ? Right. Right. Where, the Christian church has destroyed that image. Why? Because it's for their propaganda of perpetuating white supremacy. Because in the same mind, I'm sure, uh, watch this, uh, uh, what's your son's name? Nicholas. All right, Nicholas, I have a question. Who is this? Jesus. You see that? And when you were in store, it's funny you said that, is that I, it's not him. That's Those not Jesus. <laughs> that, that's not uh, Jesus Christ. That's right. not him. Exactly. But, okay. So what happens is because it, uh, read it again, read it again. That's a part of those pastors destroying and scattering the flock. Read it again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Uh -huh. Woe be unto the pastors. So destruction is going to come upon these pastors that do what? Read. That destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. Who are the sheep of that pastor? The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. We are that flock that has been scattered with many doctrines, philosophies, vain deceits, all of these things that are lies and do not help our people be uplifted. You understand? That would explain why there's so much change against the culture. Right. And God has a problem with us because of the fact that we don't rely on his source of wisdom and knowledge. Look, here's Jeremiah 14, 14, then we're going to close up with Matthew 26. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 14. Uh-huh. Then the Lord said unto me, uh -huh. the prophets prophesied lies. Ah, uh, so these prophets that are all about destroying the, and scattering the flock of God's pasture, they prophesy lies. They misconstrue scriptures. They give out doctrines. They basically hinder the people of Israel from coming back to learning who they are. But they destroy them by giving them philosophies that destroy their households, destroy their walk, and ultimately destroy them getting salvation. Read on. 
the prophets prophesy lies uh -huh. in my name. And, and then they say they do it in the name of God. Yeah. Here, Th right. This is written in the Bible. So why didn't he bring that out? Why didn't he talk about that? Why didn't he use that as wisdom so that he could stabilize what he was hearing from that man? Read on. I sent them not. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Neither have I commanded them. Ah, so he didn't, come, those type of teachers, God didn't command them. The ones you see on the street teaching our people their nationality, their purpose in God. That's why I think the officer was asking, have you taught your son his purpose? He is to be a leader amongst his people. He is to be a revolutionary to bring his people out of this mental slavery that we're in. Well, All right. I can understand and probably answer that question about why didn't he do that, refer back to that, to confirm or deny what that man was teaching him. And it's, it's simple. Right. The love of the flesh, he enjoys feeling like he's in power. And, right. And that there's somebody there justifying all of his actions. So, of course, if I speak out to say something to him, all he's got to do is deny. And all right. that's just it. It's the last word on it. All right. But thank you. And I get in contact with King us. King James, I appreciate that. Hey, like get in that. contact with us. Uh, we are we are Israel united in Christ. As you leave, I'll, I'll speak so that you can hear us. Okay. okay we are Israel united in Christ. We teach that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. That's right. We used to scream "Black Power" while Haram was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.